What's up everybody, this is Jack from Crypto 49er bringing you my knowledge in cryptocurrency. So today I want to talk about adding stop loss to the Gecko trading bot. I saw that a lot of people are asking for adding a stop loss to a particular strategy. In this case, the BBRSI. So not only did I see it in the Gecko forum right here regarding the BBRSI, I also got a comment on one of my previous videos on YouTube. I still check those comments once in a while. So right now, there is no stop loss setup for any strategy that that's created. At least, unless that strategy was created with stop loss in mind, there is no stop loss imp implementation in Gecko. You can't simply say check off a box and say I just want stop loss at a certain percentage and you're done. It's not that simple, with Gecko. You have to build it yourself. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that today. Before I do, I just want to show you this strategy called BBRSI. This is one of those strategies that is very popular right now. I mean, I've seen multiple comments about it, and I've seen XFFFF. So he collects them all into his GitHub repository right here, and you see BBRSI here. And there's multiple questions that people ask about it. It's a very popular strategy. So I'm going to first explain to you what it does, how it works, and then I'll explain how to add stop loss to it. So this is the JavaScript file for BBRSI. As you can see, it does use both the Bollinger Bands indicator and the RSI indicator. For people that are not familiar with what the Bollinger Bands are, this, these are the Bollinger Bands, and the bottom is RSI. So the RSI is very simple and straightforward, right? If it's below 30, it's oversold, and if it's above 70, it's overbought. It's really that simple. With the Bollinger Bands, you have a red line here. The red line is the moving average. And then you have these two, you could call it bands. Basically, it's like it's a, it's a channel. So there's the lower channel and upper channel. So what these are, these are two standard deviations away from the red line. And the idea is if the price goes beyond the bands, that means that it's, it's, there's a good chance it's going to come back down. So right now, it has it gone it gone past and it's about to go past again and this time it came back down. So the first time it didn't, the second time it did. The other way people use Bollinger Bands is this. If they see a lot of contraction going on, let's we'll scroll through here for some contraction. Oh, there it is. If you see a, a contraction process going on in the Bollinger Bands, then eventually it will shoot up and that's what it did here. So that's the basic way of using Bollinger Bands and RSI. So how does the BBRSI strategy use these indicators? With this strategy, what it first does is it detects the zone that it's in. So in this five zones, so there is none, top, high, low, bottom. My understanding, and I could be wrong, the top zone is above the band. The high zone is between the red line and the green line on top. And then the low zone is the between the red line and the lower green line, the lower green band. And then the bottom is below the green band. So that's the different zones that it uses. And what it does is it will also track the trend. So it will, it will track how long it is in each of the particular zones. So right now it is hanging around between the high and low zone for quite a bit because it's going bouncing in and out of that zone. Whereas compared to here, it's once it hit the top, it pretty much stay in the high zone for quite a bit and then bounces between the high and the top zone, as you can see. And the strategy keeps track of how long how, how long it spends in each zone. So in this case, you can see it spends probably like eight, nine days or eight, nine minutes. I guess I have, to, I have it in the minute chart here. Eight, nine minutes in the high zone. So and then it use all this information to determine when to buy. So the idea is, if the price is lower than the lower Bollinger Band and the RSI value is less than the threshold that you set. So you can set it to any threshold you want. You can set it to 30, which is pretty good. Or you can even set it lower to like 20 if you really want to buy it at the dips. If the price is at lower than the low Bollinger Band and the RSI value is low and the duration is greater than the persistence. So the persistence is how long you set it to be. So if you want the duration to happen, to happen for a certain while, let's say that you want, so you basically you want to see it in the low zone for quite a bit before you buy. So that's the idea. You want to see it in here, staying in the low zone for over 10, over X amount of candles, then you buy it, that's what you set it to be. So that's the idea. So that's when you basically buy it. So you basically look for when it stays around here to buy, and then you look for 
pretty much the opposite when you sell, right? So the idea is the price is greater than the BB dot middle, which is the red line here. So it's got to be greater than this. And the RSI value has got to be higher than your threshold. So the higher than the threshold that you set. So it's got to be, let's say you set it to 70 or 80, it's got to be higher than that before you sell. So that's the basic idea with this strategy. So that's how this strategy works. Now I added two specific lines because I'll show you there is a particular issue with this strategy. At least that's my understanding. It's not really so much of an issue, but I'll show you what happens right now. What I added is these two particular lines. It's really just to show you on the terminal. Whenever this strategy issues a buy signal, it'll tell you the price it bought at, and then it'll also send another message when it sells, sell price and the price that it sold at. So let's go ahead and run the strategy right now in Gecko, and I just want to show you how it looks like and what that issue that I'm talking about. So I have it set to a very short date range, 415 to 422, and I have it already set up to 14 interval for the RSI. The threshold is 2080, which is really, uh, really steep. I really want to limit how many times it issues buy and sell signals. So let's just go ahead and run this strategy. Once I run it, you see on my terminal here, it's going through and showing every single zone that is in, the duration, the trend. So it gets kind of mess here, but I'm just going to copy everything in here. And I'm going to go into a brand new file in Visual Studio Code. I'm going to look for the buy message, and you'll see that it said buy. Awesome. So it, bought, it, it should a buy command around, I don't know what time it is. I normally add in more additional information, like what time it actually issued a buy. But in this case, it's one have a very simple log statement to show you guys what's happening. So right now it issue a buy command and then it issue another buy command, you see? So and then another one and another one. So there is a problem here where this particular strategy is keep on issuing out buy commands before it actually gets a sell sends out a sell command. I am not sure if this causes any problem for Gecko. It might not. It could just be me thinking that you know it might cause a problem. But I do hear people complain that Gecko um, stops out for whatever reason, network issue or whatever it is. I never had that problem myself. But I don't think that this is good to see the bot keep on sending out buy signals when it, it can only buy once. Again, for people that don't know, Gecko only can buy once. Gecko doesn't do partial buys. So it either buys everything or it sells everything. It does not buy like 5%, 10%. It can't do that. So by having this strategy keep on issuing buy commands, it is just probably probably causing issue to the bot itself. That's my opinion. So now I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix this particular issue along with how to actually add stop loss. But before I do, I just want to again go over the fact that right now, in this duration and time frame, it had a simulated profit of negative 0.17%, mainly because it made some profits, but at the same time, you see some of these trades right here, like this one right here, had a 4.2% loss. What I want to do is, essentially, I'm going to bring up my strategy here, BBRSI-SL, that's the one I just modified from the original strategy, to include a stop loss, so that it stop losses at 3%. So right now, what that means is, you will not see a loss trade of over 3%. Any trade that is a loss is limited to 3% with my modified version of the BBRSI strategy. All right, so let's go ahead and show you guys how that works. So this is my BBRSI-SL with stop loss strategy. And what I first did was I added advice equal false. This is a part of what is needed to limit how many buy signals that this bot sends out, this strategy sends out. And the buy price equals zero is just to track when I bought at so that I know if I sell at a certain price how much I will be losing. So those two I added. So the next thing I did was I just modified the if statement to check for the advice flag. So again, right now it starts off with advice being false because it hasn't sent out a signal yet. So the first signal should send out should be a buy. So it goes in and checks if this advice is not advice. Okay, so then it goes ahead and goes in because it is able to go in and say, let me see if all these other fields, all these other variables qualify for this condition, kind of qualify this if statement and can go in. So if it does go in, then it'll set the advice to true. So then now it's now it said that, okay, we sent out buy signal. We won't be able to send out additional buy signal until we send out a sell signal. Anyway, so inside this, first buy section of the if statement. So what it does is basically does everything the same thing. Only thing is I adjusted the if statement here and I added these two lines. 
a buy is equal to true and buy price equal to candle dot close meaning that it will keep track of when it bought what price it buy at so the next thing is I modified the if statement for selling so again it checks again to see if it's been advised so if it's been advised then it knows okay so we previously sent out a buy signal now we can go in to see if it qualifies for the qualify order conditions for sell so it does goes in there and the first thing it does is it checks if selling at a more than x percentage loss and the percentage is what you can set up in the TOML file so I added it here so the stop loss percentage equal 3 you can set the number to anything you want from 1 to 99 so I would think most people will set it between 1 to 20 or 1 to maybe even 10 the idea is you how, how, this is what you want to limit your stop loss to be in this particular line it's going to check if the buy price is greater than the candle close times 1.03 in this case because I said the 3% loss meaning that if the buy price is going to be more than 3% of the current price the candle that closes the current price so more than 3% of the current price is going to do nothing so it won't do anything at all it won't sell but then otherwise it will sell and finish the process and set the advice back to false so that we can go back and send in the buy signal and that's the whole idea with this strategy is to prevent the selling when the price is less than 3% is it's more than 3% less than the buy price all right so let's go in and take a look at this strategy so right now again the previous strategy the default BBRSI strategy had a zero, negative 0 0.17 so by taking this particular trade off pretty much I'm not be able to take exactly this whole trade off but I should be able to take off any trade that doesn't that is over four over three percent it should limit the losses that we see so let's go ahead and run it and let's see how much we can profit with the new strategy so I'm set to new strategy here and then we'll run it and you see now it's a 1.69 percent gain see because now we're no longer selling at a price that is more than three percent of the buy price so you see here now it's only selling it at a 2.49 percent loss and again at 1.34 percent but it has more of these other gains in here so overall it comes out to being a positive strategy for this particular time frame so that's basically it in terms of how to set up a stop loss I mean each strategy is slightly different because I have been working on my own strategy and the way to set up stop loss for my own strategy was different than this where I just set this up separately from in, rather than doing it inside the sell statement here I was able to set up separately but it depends on the strategy it depends on when the strategy wants to sell in this case it's when I try to set this up outside it was selling constantly mainly because of the fact is this with this particular strategy again the BBRSI strategy you're buying at a very low point but you don't know where the bottom is so if you set up here and you want to you want to sell at three percent before it goes up here then it's going to sell very often because a lot of times it's going to fall because a lot of times it will fall past three percent and then it will say oh if that's a three percent loss sell it and then it goes down again oh that's another three percent loss sell it again so it end up keep on selling for you and you end up not being able to have effective strategy so in this particular strategy you needed to put the stop loss within the sell if statement other strategies are different but this is a general idea of how to do it for this strategy hopefully this will help you guys to understand how to put in stop losses there are other ways to put in stop losses as well but this is the way that I'm comfortable with and this is the way that has worked so far for me so that's my video for today guys let me know what you guys think leave a comment down below upload resteam follow me if you're new to my channel if it isn't crypto it isn't worth mining it isn't worth speculating I'll see you guys tomorrow peace out